video. All right, so uh, find the area of the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in this ellipse. If you set uh, y equal to 0, then you get x over 3 squared equal to 1, which gives you x squared equals to 3 squared, which gives you x equals to plus minus 3. If you set x equal to 0, y over 4, then, then uh, if you set x equal to 0, then x goes away and you get y over 4 squared equal to 1, which gives you y squared equal to 4 squared, that gives you y equals to plus or minus 4. Now what does that mean? That means the x-intercept is 3 and negative 3, and y-intercept is 4 and negative 4, and so you get an ellipse like this one, okay? Knowing that, let's pick a point here, call it x comma y, and think about the rectangle that's inscribed in this uh, oval shaped thing, ellipse, and uh, it must look like this. One. If you tilt it, it doesn't. If you connect it in some other way, you, you can't get a rectangle. The only way you can get a rectangle is this one. And because x comma y satisfies this equation, you can think of this as the constraint. And what's our target? Target is uh, the area. We're trying to maximize the area. So that's your target function. And because this length is 2x <coughs> and this length is 2y, then the area equals to 2x times 2y, which gives you 4xy. So our goal is to maximize 4xy under this cons constraint. How do you solve any, any maximization question? You solve for y, or one of the variables, plug it back in, and differentiate say equal to zero. Okay. So let's say, let, let's see this. Uh, area is equal to 4x. Now, if you solve this for y, <coughs> y squared over, actually, let's solve this for x. I, I, I think if you solve for x, it's slightly easier. Okay. Um, so let's solve for x. So if you, if you have x over 3 squared 1 minus y squared over 16, and uh, x squared is therefore um, 9 times 1 minus y squared over 16. And then you take the square root, and that's what you get, OK? So this x can now be replaced by square root of 9 times 1 minus y squared over 16. And then you can multiply by y. And three, okay, so this is a four. I can pull a 16 out and make it as nine over 16. And 16 minus y squared times y. And then nine over 16, if I pull it outside, I have to take the square root, and that becomes four times three over four. Square root of 16 minus y squared times y. Okay? So 4, 4 cancels, and I get 3 times 16 minus y squared times y. Okay. So any questions so far? Yes. Uh, how do you get the 3 over 4 to cancel? 3 off? over Oh, uh, when you take any number outside the square root, you have to take the square root. The square root of 9 is 3. Oh, the square root of 16 four. is 4. Okay. Okay, so that's our function. The minimum value for y is 0, and maximum value for y is 4, because uh, x comma y is in the first quadrant. It can only be between here and there. Okay? All right, so we're trying to find the maximum and minimum value for this. Let's just call this as f of y. f of 0 is 0, because if y is 0, then it's 0. Anything times 0 is 0. f of 4, if you plug in there, 16 minus 4 squared, that's 0. So in both cases, we know it's 0. Uh, now, we know that 
maximum, absolute maximum or absolute minimum can only appear at the boundaries or at the critical number. So all we have to do now is to figure out the critical number for this and then uh, at the critical point evaluate this value, this thing. And the, that value will be the maximum because that's the area, okay? All right, so let's do that. F prime of y is according to, okay, we have to use the product rule. You know what, Let, let's just do this. Let's just uh, say this is square root of 16y squared minus y to the fourth. So we can just use the chain rule. That would be another uh, nice way to differentiate. See, if I leave this at outside, then I need to use the product rule. But if I bring this inside, what happens if y goes inside? It becomes y squared, right? So when you bring it inside, that gets multiplied to each individual one. So you get 16y squared minus y to the fourth. And that's much easier to differentiate than, than this one. So let's try to do this one. Okay. All right, so first of all, uh, we know that if you differentiate square roots, one over square root, of whatever that is, times the derivative of the inside function, which is uh, 2 comes down 32y minus 4y cubed. Now, when, when can this become 0? When this is equal to 0, right? So you, we said 32y minus 4y cubed equal to 0, which gives you, uh, if I factor the 4y, Let's see, uh, that will be 8 minus y squared equal to 0. So either y is 0 or y is 2 radical 2 because uh, either y is square root of 8 or y is 0. The square root of 8 can be simplified to 2 radical 2. Okay, now we found out that this, this, these are the critical numbers, but 0 is a boundary value, so it's not a critical, critical number. This is the only critical number that we have figure out. Okay, so let's plug that in. So that means uh, y squared is 8 and y to the fourth is square of this which is 64. So when I plug it in here, f of 2 radical 2 is 3 times square root of 16 times 8 minus 64. Yeah, I knew something was strange when I did it last time. This is much better. Okay, so we have, let's see, this is 128 minus 64, that's again 64, so 24, okay, so that's the correct answer. <clears throat>